The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Greetings and welcome to this joint TCMI ACES webinar. I am Anna Elise Baptista, the chair of TCMI. It is my pleasure today to introduce the joint webinar series and today's presenter and topic. The joint TCMI ACIST webinars are presented as a service to members of TCMI and ACIST and to guests. The purpose of the joint series is to advance the discourse and practices of innovative metadata. Presented by Marcia Zeng, professor at School of Information, Kent State University, this webinar will introduce a competency framework that defines the knowledge and skills necessary for professional practice in the area of linked data developed by the Linked Data for Professional Educators project and funded by the Institute of Museum and Library Services, IMLS. You will have an opportunity to ask presenters questions near the close of the webinar. There is a panel on the right of your screen to enter the text of your questions. We ask that you wait to enter your text until near the end of the webinar. I will moderate the questions and answers. We will address as many questions as our time allows. With that, I'll turn the podium over to Marcia Zeng. Hi, everyone. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I know you're from all over the world. Thank you for coming to the webinar. My name is Marcia Zen. I'm representing on behalf of our Linked Data for Professional Education project team. As everyone knows that Linked Data is recognized as one of the end opinions for open data, open science, and data-driven research and learning in today's um, everything, everyone talking about that. But the question still exists, however, about what should be expected as linked data-related knowledge, skills, and if you teach or learn, what are the learning outcomes? Another very uh, probably popular issue is where to find the relevant learning materials. So this webinar tries to talk about the project done by the Linked Data for Professional Education project. One of them is uh, the major component that I'm going to talk about. It's the competency index for linked data. Uh, sometimes we spell that as a linked data competency index, LDCI. And after talking about this part, we will introduce or demonstrate some getting the learning resources, more than 600 such resources we have already selected, connected with the competencies. And finally, how you can use this competency index for your self-learning, teaching, and training using the tools and the demonstrated uh, way of organizing, as well as the data sets, um, tutorials that you can use. So if you have any question, you can write down any time, and then later we will uh, try to answer the questions. So the first is the project itself, uh, Link Data for Professional Education project, funded by the IMLS, as Anne already mentioned that. And before this, we had a uh, assessment study, a planning project, and defined it, there is a need to develop this kind of um, the whole <clears throat> competency framework for teaching, learning, uh, linked data. So the project has been also 
a affiliated with the Dublin Core Education and Outreach Committee. The PI, our principal investigator, is Michael Crandall, uh, the senior principal scientist investment invest in the University of Washington High School. He's also our former DCMI chair, chair of the governing board. Others, including the Kansas State University, Dublin Core Metadata Initiative. But we also had wonderful content partners because we need professionals' input. We need other uh, non-English based uh, input. We need international experts involved. So you can see we have wonderful content partners. And we are very lucky to have excellent technical development team. Um, they have <clears throat> made the whole competency itself into linked data. And we have a big project website that's one I'm going to introduce. So among the major products, the first one is the a whole competency framework. We call that as competency index for linked data, which defines a set of assertions of the knowledge, skills, and sometimes just the habits of mind required for professional practice in this particular area of linked data. We also have a whole package, uh, more than 600 learning resources selected and described aligned with the competencies. The tool of this are combined together through our website that if you can access that, everyone can go to the explore, easy to remember, explore the dublincore.net and click the explore, what we will get. Click on the explore. Now, we can get the whole competency index. You can browse on the left side. So what do all those things mean? There's six major topic clusters because you want to narrow down and focus on say what I really need to know and where I should enhance. So these are the topic clusters. I will explain more later. And those numbers, are the learning resources that aligned with each of the topics. For example, if I try to find out the, the fundamentals of linked data, yeah, then I click on the plus sign to open up with the uh, topics like this. For the linked data principles, Right. So what the competencies are? There are two competencies you can see here. First, you to know Tim Berners-Lee's principles of linked data. So that is the competency. I'm sure many of you already can check this out. Say, yes, I know. And the next one is knows the five star of open data. So this is another um, competency as the fundamental. If I want to know more about this, you see there is a 66 here, which means the resources that aligned with this. So now this competency, this knows the five star, is on the top. You see that here? And each of these are the, <coughs> Each of this is a resource that you can see the full description and the link to the material in order to uh, get in really to know the five star. So I show this as a, a very brief walkthrough of the, the two major products. One is the competency index. Another is a whole set about 600 materials that are together aligned with the
the competencies. So next, the major part is to introduce this competency index for linked data. Uh, it is also called linked data competency index. Okay. So this gives you a real readable roadmap of the concept and skills that relate to practices and technologies of linked data. Uh, who will benefit? With anyone who is interested to learn and teach, you will find this useful. But from the picture, you can see already that it's like a hierarchical structure, yes. So the competency index first are organized according to the topic. And then under the topic, you will have competency. For example, um, yeah, here we can see that I say how long that the competency looks like. It's like a phrase, very short uh, phrase, only a tweet lens phrase about the knowledge or skills that can be learned. It means what you can learn, what you should understand. But in order to approve the benchmarks, benchmarks are the ones that tell people how to do things. So one is understanding, one is doing. The a benchmark is an action that demonstrates accomplish, accomplishment in a particular given competency. Let's see in an example here. For example, we have a whole topic about interact with the RDF data. Yes, yeah, so you can probably go on as processing, querying, visualizing, analyzing, manipulation, a lot of them. Just about querying um, RDF data, this topic, this one of them, we have some competencies. For example, the first one is say, you, un you need to understand what is Sparkle query uh, matches an RDF graph. Okay, so you can first need to know or understand this. The second is, well, in order to do that, you need to understand the basic syntax of a Sparkle query. Here I give a simple Sparkle query example. It probably very odd to people who never see that. So mainly, this is about query the DBpedia in order to find the URI of artists who were influenced by Picasso. So how can you prove that you have this competency, understands the basic syntax of a Sparkle query? That's why there are benchmarks coming up. So their benchmarks requires you to do things that you will know how to form or understand the basic syntax of a Sparkle query. If you know how to use this, how to use that, then you get this competency. Okay, so that's the structure of the competency index. You will see a lot of the uh, verbs that used for competencies. Um, it's mostly understanding that, learning that in order to, for the benchmarks um, are the specific things you can do. You can, put this into, if you're teaching, you can put this into exam questions and homework assignment. The competency index were developed by the team of the, um, from Dublin Core mostly, and led by Tom Baker, our CIO of the Dublin Core. <clears throat> and it's a long time starting from nothing to making 
uh, 95 competencies and the 30 topics. And they grouped this into six clusters. And there are experts input and their expert question challenging the draft. So the competency index were uh, revised in several versions. We also went through the user testing, for example, have a half-day workshop at the Dublin Core Conference in 2016. The competency index's whole framework tries to cover enough topics, enough, and enough detail uh, <clears throat> of this domain competence, but not, we don't want to say how difficult of each of that because it's basic for library scientists maybe not the same level for computer scientists in some part but the, on the other side you can also see when you deal with computer deal with RDF um, maybe the computer scientists feel basic but the, the catalogers don't feel basic so we don't emphasize or indicate whether it is difficult or easy or how long you will need to learn. Um, another important thing is that there is no ranking or order topics. So it doesn't mean you have to learn this one in order to learn the next one, even though we have a suggested order, but uh, this is not a ranked order. So that's the the first uh, cluster is Fundamentals of Resource Description Framework, the RDF. Um, so that's the four topics underneath this cluster. If you see individual one, for example, relate to RDF serialization, okay, on the website, you can see that there are competencies listed out. And in order to show you understand that there are benchmarks that live listed under here. So this is a refresh of the structure, but also the first cluster um, that I am showing here. Just understand the RDF. The next major cluster is about fundamentals of linked data. And this probably have been more widely taught and included in, in the schools, in the educational um, workshops, and also professional training. And again, when we look at linked data principles, we look at the things, we do show you what are the two competencies if you think you understand big data principles. We've mentioned this too before, the four principles and the five stars, right? So this is second cluster, um, all relate to the linked data. Now we're getting a little bit more details for the RDF vocabularies and application profiles. Um, how will you <coughs> deal with that existing one? You'll find them, maintain the vocabularies, versioning them, publishing them, mapping the RDF vocabularies. How about not finding anywhere I need to develop? So just relate to the RDF application profiles, the last one, and then we design that. If you design a a RDF based vocabularies, you can see how many competencies you you have to have. That's a lot, right? In comparison with the previous one. And some of them, you see the plus sign means that there are additional benchmarks listed. In addition to the competencies, we have the benchmarks indicate how you can do that and then what you can get. 
So this is a very big uh, a cluster and a lot of things involved. Creating and transforming RDF data, that's another um, full of hands-on exercises <laughs> with the understanding. So first, everyone needs to know how to manage identifiers and then deal with creating the RDF data. After you create it, there are also versioning issue, there are also the provenance, and also we can see how we would, if it's linked data, you have to cleaning, you have to mapping, you have to enriching um, the new product. So this is a whole uh, competency cluster also included a lot. Just about creating RDF data, for example, yeah, just creating um, and then the, the competency cluster, and then this is the topic. We get one, two, three competencies. Yeah. Um, then we will need to the uh, we we got one multiple competencies, and then the multiple the benchmarks showing you how will you be able to, for example, deal with non-RDF resources, deal with CSV files, and deal with the relational databases. Right? So the details. If you want to learn, this is the number you click, then you will see the existing training materials. The number five cluster is interacting interacting probably um, majority of people will have to deal with that if you work in libraries if you work researching um, helping other researchers you will probably deal with more like querying uh, RDF data you can see how many uh, details we have to get this in addition to this visualizing this is amazing when you can grab all the data and then visualize them and even reasoning over RTF data and accessing the quality. The accessing RTF data quality becomes more and more important because more open data available and everyone knows we will need to make sure the data originally came has a high quality, trustable. Additional things are um, putting here including the uh, data and analytics and also you further interact with them, uh, finding more and then manipulate the RDF data. So that's, a, that's not a big chunk of the topics to deal with. The last one is uh, still under develop is to creating the linked data applications. Um, for this one, we only have one topic so far and hope that um, we'll hear more from professionals, from you to enhance this particular part. So in conclusion of this part about the competency index topics, we got six clusters that I just showed you one by one. And first about the RDF, second about linked data principles, and then the vocabularies and application profiles. The number four cluster deal with creating and transforming link data. And then what about your role it's just interact, deal with the RDF data. That's the whole number five. And number six is creating link data applications. Okay, so not too complicated, right? <laughs> now, <clears throat> um, 
again reviewing the concept of what we have here we can see that you can access the full competency index through our website and get the whole thing that uh, you can download in the Chinese and the English so far. The, we will come other translations as well. So you will see the clusters, right? And then you will see the topics and competencies, okay? So you can download the everything here. Now, refresh. Again, the structure, topic, cluster. Under each topic clusters, we only have six topic clusters because otherwise spread around. The particular topics that the competencies and benchmarks are presented under that topic. So another competency. What about the next one, here one? One more, right? One more. And the the minus time means I clicked that and the, the benchmarks shows up. <laughs> this is the structure. I'm sure that the, uh, you will find them useful when you construct your learning paths, your course materials, and but how we can do better with them. So, um, important part is where to find this learning resources openly available. I'm not requiring my student to get something we don't know. We just find the useful things um, through the open resources. So, I will demonstrate just uh, simply how you can use the resources aligned with the competencies. So many of us have the question, say, well, now I see the competency index, the whole framework, but where can we find the materials that we need to learn and obtain those competencies? Where should I start? If you go to the website, again, left side first, you start with that, you choose a topic area you want to check, and then you will click on this to open up, open up, then you will see the materials aligned with that competency. If I choose a particular uh, material, okay, you will get into the description page about that particular learning material. There is a description here, all edited, and there are detailed um, metadata described. And with this URL, usually you can, from here, get the original materials. But remember that this is all based on the open resources. In case the materials is no longer there because the URI, URL changed, you just try to search on the web. Most of them are still available. Then um, another important thing is that you see here we have the competencies aligned with this material. And you will say what this one uh, competency belong to, which topic. You mouse over that, <clears throat> you will find out, okay, this is about creating and transforming linked data. This is about uh, uh, in the mapping part. So you can align this material with what you know about that particular competency or benchmark. So over 600 openly available learning resources available here for you to uh, explore to use. 
including webinars, podcasts, lectures, web pages, ratings, all from the open web. And our um, KSU partner, um, Sean Dolan, spent a lot of time leading the selection, the quality verification, and also alignment of these competencies with each of these resources. Okay, so you can try that when you finish the webinar and maybe start with something you want to figure out. Good. The final part will be about how to use this in self-learning or if I'm a teacher, how I use this in teaching or in training. <clears throat> so I'm going to demonstrate some approaches we can um, just demonstration how you can use this, deal with pulling the competencies together or pulling the resources together and finally a huge OCOC data set that you can use to implement your learning materials and self-learning, pulling all of them together. Okay, the first uh, thing is dealing with the uh, competencies. Um, so if I'm a cataloger or if I want to train catalogers, what are all the competencies they need to know? They, do they need to know everything or something that you recommend? You can pull them together by yourself, but if you want to see our demonstration, you can also use what we already put together. So on this web page, when you come here, this top part is the competencies. Then you can see the learning uh, the saved sets and learning maps. For example, um, the learning maps created for, say, how as a cataloger, what are the competencies maybe you should have. If it's a data scientist, which will be different, or if you're web developers and what are the competencies you should know, right? Or generally for librarians, for people working in the archives. And so those are the examples that you can check. Let's take one as example. The learning map competencies for catalogers. Now you can check. Do I already know this or do I know that already? Those are the competencies that are uh, selected for the catalogers. Well, wait, there are a mo lot more. <laughs> you have to understand. Um, yes, even more. <laughs> right. But at least that you can see that we um, pulled a roadmap together for catalogers to follow. You can decide and make your own uh, among the 95 competencies, how many that as a cataloger, as a cataloger, or if I train catalogers, the cataloger should have. So this is one example. Again, you can see the other um, learning maps already created for different like a web designer or data scientist or generally librarian, okay? Below each competency, again, it's tied with the resources that I showed you before. Each of them cataloged and then aligned with the competency. You click that, you will find the resources. So this is dealing with the um, competencies pulled together what exactly basic things that you recommend was to know or I would like you to know as a particular uh, professional job or a particular class, particular training. 
the learning maps deals with the the learning map each of them deals with a particular uh, targeted audience or sim so next question is well, you have over 600 materials. Do I need to go all of go through all of them? Is in creating RDF data, you get 44. Do I need to go over everything? How things, uh, resources, maybe also cover other topics? For this reason, we have another way that showing you, you can uh, make more efficient use um, when you compile the learning materials or when you teach or when you do your self-learning. This is called the save the sets. Uh, again, this is a demonstration. So you can choose uh, the materials and then using this same approach to make your save the set. The resources for catalogers or data scientists that we've developed that we showed you, we have learning maps also aligned with resources for, for them. If I click on the uh, resources for catalogers, I can see that there are 13, okay, not 600, right? 13 resources we think you may need to um, at least to go through, understand them as a catalog, right? Um, the 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 safety set here are demonstrations. It's not really say uh, you need really need to go through all of that. So it's a demonstration of how you can put together. But anything that open here that people share here. You can use that um, as your starting point. You can create your own safety set in the future and for your student to use using this approach. I hope that so far everything's okay and you already see what we can do with that. Okay. Another very useful resource for learners and teachers would be a real data set. Well, we're extremely grateful to have a big data set generously uh, provided by OCOC. It is called the WordCat Link Data Library Science Subset. You see the, the way that they pull together is based on the FAST or Dewey Decimal and the LC classification um, that have the heading of library, library science, uh, library information science, and the classification of that. So pull them together as a whole big data set, and it's a code. WordCat link data library science subset. So why we for the project and the project content partner, why provide a data set? Because you have, now you will have a set of the data set you can use to test your skills. Um, you can even revise or modify or mapping, converting and using that to do many things that mentioned in the competency index. And also, if you're teaching, you want to ensure that the consistent result can be obtained uh, from queries uh, to access to this data set and will not suddenly disappear, right? You may, I'm thinking that for your own use or for your classes, for your training, those will be so useful for hands-on. The educators can create new learning materials, hands-on assignments, um, or to have a whole class of students try to query and obtain results from the same data sets. So this is very, very useful. Well, you can see the first thing you, you recognize, notified, is that 
access the data set from here. So if I click this, I will be able to go to the place to download. Uh, but I need to tell you that this is directly uh, coded FTP. So if you are dealing with a server in a public space, maybe there are um, uh, maybe there's some securities that do not allow you to directly go to the server. So try at different places if you cannot get this. But I'm sure it is here, and we just tested uh, OCOC in OCOC uh, yesterday. You can download the, the whole data sets as in triple or XML, and this is Mark, right? Mark XML. The most exciting thing is that it will be available for next nine years. <laughs> so if you are not yet to use that, you can still come back uh, to get it. This is available under the ODC by license. This means Open Data Commons Attribution License. It is a license agreement intended to allow users to freely share, you can share, modify, and use this database subject only to the attribution requirements. Okay? Very exciting, and we will be able to use this for the next nine years. Well, how can I start with that? <laughs> um, the project team also developed a tutorial and with some sample queries provided here that you can download as PDF files. So this uh, tutorial is available. Again, if you go to the Explore, it's related and this will be the OCOC data set, this whole collection, either access to link or get a tutorial. All right, when we get to tutorial, what are there? The tutorial included those important things, for example, how you can download data sets with n triples, and even you can store <clears throat> store the data. And the next one is how you can now query using Sparkle. In order to show you how to do this querying data, we know we deal with machines, we deal with the uh, triples, we deal with Sparkle query language. Now, the tutorial also gives you the sample queries. There are several simple queries that each of them you can download. Okay, simple queries, simple queries. You can download as PDF and try to use that. Additional Sparkle exercises are also provided. So with this tutorial, with that data set, you can build a whole class for uh, training and teaching. I hope those will be useful. Now, when we look back, say what have we discussed so far about this competency index for linked data versus, well, why you develop that? What is this uh, to be used? So we use the competency index to describe what a learner can learn, what skills, the demonstrate and standing. And this can be used for job descriptions even, um, for course syllabi, of course, you see each competency, uh, it's a like a learning outcome that you can list in the, the course syllabi. And this may be 
aligned with university degrees and with other useful things you, you can uh, assess people's competencies. So who can benefit from that? Students. This helps students choose courses that cover what you want to learn. Yeah, I heard about linked data there, there, there. But is this particular course will give me additional things, uh, what kind of things you can see. The student can use that. For instructors, I feel the most useful ones is for instructors, design a whole course or workshop, um, put into syllabus and uh, design the homework, quizzes, exams, using the benchmarks, using the competencies. For self-learners, can you explore what's new, what's additional things I need to learn, and what are available methods related to think data. Especially you are already very techy, probably a quick way you can go through. We also found that this is useful for job description because even um, many new challenges to institutions that you need to hire someone to uh, be open-minded, to be able to deal with linked data, but what we should put in the job description. Yeah. So I'm not requiring the employers to learn all this before they write that. They can use this job uh, competency index to write their job descriptions. We would also like to hear from you to help update the competency index for the linked data. Because the technology continually, um, just continually evolves, right? The competency index, it's just a living document. If you see gaps in this coverage, um, feel free to propose new competencies or benchmarks updates, or even just changes of wording, uh, you can let the editorial board know. In this GitHub site, there will be a very easy uh, guided process as long as you have a account, uh, a single mouse click, you can suggest what should be covered or changed or updated. Okay, so we are grateful that we still have a volunteer of editorial board from Dublin Core and experts from the field. <clears throat> so there are three places uh, the competency index are hosted. Available on the website that I shared with you and went through you get the competencies aligned with learning resources, you have demonstration of the roadmaps, and um, also the access to that OC, LC, WordCAD data set with the tutorial instruction. The maintenance is at the GitHub. The competencies are updated there. You can also contribute and share your insights with us. The competency index fully registered at the ASN. Um, it's educator, you probably know this achievement standard network, have all the competency indexes registered for education and for government use and, and each state. So our competency index is also registered with URI of each of them, specification and definition. For more references, you can find more from the website of the explore.doublingcore.net and the GitHub. You may also hear the another webinar by Tom Baker at the FAO webinar uh, last October. And the whole team together, you can see all the people here, 
presented a full session about this whole project. You can find a full paper, the rationale, the progress, and the series behind that in this particular Dublin Core event uh, website. As you can see, the important people in the team are already listed on that paper, but I also want you pay attention to that great partners we have through this whole project. Uh, three years projects, not easy. Everyone lives in the different part of the world and our meeting is always someone's midnight, someone's early morning. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> Um, I want to thank you for your time and the interest to this competency index. And if you have any question, you can always ask us and we can um, try to answer, respond one by one. Or we can involve you even more to the editorial board at further editing. Anyway, thank you so much, and now I will be ready for questions if you have any. Okay, Anna, you can okay. take it. Thank you, Marcia. Thank you very much for such an interesting webinar. I hope our audience also uh, thinks uh, it was interesting. For me, it was very interesting. I'm a, a professor myself. So, um, uh, it's now uh, time for our, our uh, audience to put their questions. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I will uh, ask, we, ask you one question that is, um, you talked about uh, uh, translations. Uh, will it be available in other languages? <laughs> okay, that's a very good question. Um, the, so far, the translation, the, there's only one translation available uh, that it's in Chinese, thanks to a team in Shanghai Library and the Sichuan University. They have to be already know a lot of them. So Chinese translation is available. Maybe we will be able to get um, the Korean translation. Uh, very soon, <laughs> and we will welcome to others mm. to translate that. Everything is in the GitHub. It's very easy, and once you get to the GitHub, you can see the whole um, translated one just available on the GitHub. Oh, thank you. Very, yeah. very interesting. Um, I hope I hope if we have uh, attendees in this webinar from uh, that speak Portuguese or Spanish, yeah, Castellano, I would like very much to for them to enter in contact with me, and so that we could have a, a translation in Portuguese or in Spanish. We already have a, a, a question here from. Um, um, I apologize if I don't say your name correctly. Let, I'm going to try Ye Chun Wu. And the question is when querying the ontological data sets, how many such ontological sets are available? What are they? A couple of examples will be sufficient. Thanks. Ontological, can you repeat the question? The question okay. is when querying. Querying the ontological data sets, how many mm -hmm. such ontological data sets are available? What mm -hmm. are they? A couple of examples will be <laughs> sufficient. I think he's referring to the probably the OCLC uh, data set, no? Okay. Mm. One of the places you probably know is LOV, Linked Open Vocabulary. Okay, LOV, Linked Open Vocabularies. This one uh, included any, well, there are some 
some quality control. The a lot of ontologies available there. In, also, there are uh, metadata schemas that expressed in in turned into the RDF vocabulary, like Dublin Core. So, any one of them that marked up with all or SCARS um, are registered in this linked open vocabulary uh, site. The information about how many classes, how many properties, as well as the live visualization, you click on that, you can see the uh, live visualization of this as well. So if I can, yes, if I see the uh, link open vocabularies, if I can get to, I hope it's working. If, if they, oh, yeah, sorry. I don't know whether, yeah, maybe it's uh, L O V da O K F N da org. So we'll see, we'll see if it's coming back later. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. this is, yeah, this is one of the places you can uh, search by keyword by things, but not by Sparkle. Okay, that's is a. Uh, is this a okay answer to the question? Uh, I don't know whether okay. I can access from this particular spot, but you can try that later. Okay, if our if our uh, participant uh, wants to uh, to to give some more information or to uh, make another question, we are open to. Uh, for the participant to do this. In the meantime, we have another question here that is from Simone Lofton. And the question is, uh, it's not a question, yeah. Thank you for, she uh, starts thanking for the informative session and then um, asks what were the technologies and standards used to develop this very interesting and useful set of resources. Thank you, thank you. The hope of this will be <laughs> useful for you to use. Um, I think the the best way to try all the things again is uh, maybe through the OCOC data set and try to access, download and then make your own entries in then using the tutorials to try different things. On the other hand, um think data technologies are uh, we found it's interesting that uh, conferences and on the websites have shared more and not so many in the published uh, legacy journals right so um, I don't know whether uh, we can answer all the questions related to technologies but uh, the but the suggestion right the, it huh? is stored in a triple store. Is it stored in? I think it is stored in a triple store, right? The information. You mean the, the, the our information itself? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our yeah. Our data sets. Each of them uh, are in the triple store. So when we align any materials with this, we, it's automatically cataloged and then put into the data triple store. So all of these are triples. Yeah. That's the, you can see the very useful when you look for any materials that's aligned with the competencies. Uh, it's, it's not anyone that doing the web page every day. It's, it's uh, automatically from the triple store. 
And, and of course, if any of our participants wants more information about specific technological issues, um, uh, they can contact the, the project, the, the, the project board, because there are people like Tom Baker that, uh, 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 and other people that were, that were in the project that are very, very in, into the technicalities of, um, of this project. Uh, we, have, we have two more questions here. <laughs> one, uh, the, the, this one is from Cliff Landis, and the question is, how long will the LD4P resource be maintained by the original development team, not relying on volunteers? That's a very good question. Mm -hmm. Uh, the project is uh, uh, completed and then the stable re maintenance is the uh, GitHub site which maintain the competencies and update that. Uh, the new resources and updating of the URI, URL of the original resources and alignment, these are all still based uh, voluntarily by our team members. Yeah. Okay. And uh, our last question, also a very interesting qu question is, uh, uh, so the triples are linking the resources to competencies. In in other words, you yeah. use linked data strategies to yeah. develop these resources. Well, uh, I okay. There are several things. So the competency index group, the editor board, were putting the competencies uh, together first. On the same time, another team is describing and selecting the resources from the web and catalog them with the higher standard, the whole template the, on the, on, developed by the team, by the technology team, because we also want to show the educational use, educational audience, and the interactive type. It's a much more than normal metadata uh, used. So after cataloging done and after the competencies were developed, then the competencies are indexed aligned to with this. At the topic level and the competencies, you can see each of them. So in the template, we will be able to show you alignment of where you have. Yes, behind this are triples. Each of the competencies we, we were showing in the Explore. So, for example, we click any of the competency itself. The competency has its own URI. That will make much uh, more consistent because it's a long sentences you see several many places talking about sparkle but each of the competency topic has their own URI would that help <laughs> thank you uh, that is very interesting <laughs> because uh, now we can use these URIs in uh, in other RDF descriptions or mm -hmm. uh, and then yeah. get everything linked together. That's very interesting. Um, uh, yes, if I, if I, okay, if I see the, if, if you see the GitHub, then you will be able to get to the competency index editing and <clears throat> This particular place in the uh, achievement standards network, you will be able to see individual registered one. So you can see the URI of this particular one, right? 
the education level, the subject, and the, the, the description that so far this is only in English, we're here. So that's another um, place that registered. And Claire. each of them has their own URI here. Yes, it is each of them. You know. Very, very interesting, Marcia. Thank you. I think we are, you know, we are, we are, we have to close the, this session. Uh -huh. Just if anybody has one more question, I can put one more question. Otherwise, we will uh, close the session because we are on time. We have the PowerPoint available on the website, right? On the webinar yes. website. Yeah. Yes, we will Good. have, and in some weeks we will have also the this uh, video oh. uh, on the DCMI YouTube channel. Hmm. So, you, for the participants, if you haven't yet looked for the DCMI YouTube channel, go for it because we already have about, I don't, I think 16 videos or so available. Hi, so, Anna, this is, so much. Hi, Anna, no, this is Stefan. There is one more question from Simone. Oh. Yes, we have three questions more here. Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah. Simone is saying, sorry? Yeah, I think uh, if if anyone need to leave, um, I would just want to thank for coming and we can keep in touch and hope that there's a whole community will make this move on. So we have we have uh, also one more question here that is from Simone that she's asking: Are there any plans to offer digital badges or micro credentials regarding linked data through LDP for PE or other team partners? It's related to the um, the questions about the guide and the materials that we could provide. Is that right? Plans to offer digital badges or micro credentials. I think this is about oh. you know uh, uh, training Division. and uh, giving right. credentials for the competencies. Yeah, I think that uh, sometimes you want to get particular people, for example, can do querying and visualize and analyze data sets. So using the competencies, um, for example, relate to uh, interacting, if you want people to be able to do all this, then you try the using this to measure individually especially the the benchmarks how you can do that so i think those are very specific uh, to be used because you don't expect a, a, some person knows everything you may want to specifically know some micro uh, particular skills that, okay yeah hope this is the question any other question you said? Uh, the other were not questions. Uh, they are um, uh, thankings. People saying thank you that they liked the webinar. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. We will uh, hope to hear from you. Okay. Okay. So uh, I think this is time to close. We are on time. Thank you again, Marcia, and also thank you to our audience. I hope you enjoyed this webinar, and I hope you can attend our next webinar about checks still in May. Thank you all, and I hope to meet you next time. Thank you.